must eat babies. No, Daddy! Must eat babies. Don't do it, Daddy! You can fight it! <laughs> You saved me, Madeline. Oh, it's over now. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and this is Science Friction. Parasites that are able to take control of another organism and force them to commit horrendous acts that they would typically find abhorrent are just something in comic books, movies, and television. At least that's what I thought. This was before I learned about Toxoplasma gondii. T. gondii is a protozoa that can only reproduce in cats. So in order to get inside cats, it's developed a way to influence the behavior of mice. Infected mice lose their fear of cats, and instead of being repelled by the odor of cat urine, which is their natural instinct, they start being attracted to it. So basically, these guys just march themselves up to their mortal enemy and say, Hey, I heard you're the guy to talk to in this town if you're looking for a good time. Toxoplasmosis can also affect humans. Pregnant women are told not to clean out litter boxes because it can be damaging to a developing fetus. It's not as harmful to adult humans, but there have been correlations found between T. gondii and schizophrenia. And other studies have shown that infected individuals have higher rates of car accidents and suicides, suggesting that although toxoplasmosis may not be making us run up and hug lions, it could be influencing our behavior in life-threatening ways. This may sound frightening, but compared to what some parasites are doing to other organisms, we're getting off pretty easy. The horsehair worm infects grasshoppers and eats out their insides, but before it's done, it makes the grasshopper throw itself into a stream and drown so the worm can more easily find a mate. The lancet fluke infects ants. During the day, an infected ant does whatever it pleases, but at night, it has an overwhelming urge to climb to the top of the tallest blade of grass, grab hold, and just hang out there. This is because the fluke wants to get inside a cow, and a cow is most likely to eat the ant and the fluke if it's on top of a tall blade of grass. Leucochloridium worms want to get inside a bird. And before I continue, I just want to say that I don't want to hear any flack in the comments about how I didn't pronounce these Latin names correctly. I am scared out of my pants talking about these things. You're lucky I'm not curled up in a ball weeping, let alone having the phonetic Latin roll naturally off my tongue. So Lou here needs to get inside a bird. So he hijacks a snail, gets inside his antenna, and makes the antenna swell and change colors so they resemble a bright shiny caterpillar. Then, he hacks into the snail's brain and drives him on over to a bird parade. The emerald jewel wasp fires venom into the brain of a cockroach, but he does it so precisely that he doesn't kill the cockroach or even make it brain dead, he zombifies it. Then he leads the obedient cockroach back to his nest, lays eggs on top of it, and when the eggs hatch, the larvae eat the cockroach. Another wasp, Polysphincta gutfrundi, has a chemical that when secreted into a spider, makes the spider abandon its own web and build a new one specially designed for holding wasp eggs. A third wasp, Glyptopanales, lays eggs inside a caterpillar. The larvae then eat their way out of the caterpillar. Miraculously, the caterpillar survives this, but that's not the craziest part. The caterpillar is actually totally cool with the whole, hey, you ate your way out of my body thing. He offers to protect the larva. The caterpillar has been seen swinging its head violently at predators who get too close to the larva who have somehow brainwashed the caterpillar. But nobody knows how they did this. So the next time a wasp stings you, just say, hey, thank you for only momentarily causing me extreme pain and not turning me into a mindless zombie lunchable for your psychotic unholy offspring. And then just walk away. And in case you thought it was just protozoa and animals having all the fun, let me introduce you to cordyceps. This is a fungus that eats insects' brains, but 
before it kills the insect, it adds insult to injury by saying, hey, don't die there. Climb up on top of that leaf and then you're allowed to die. This is so when the insect bursts full of fungal spores, they can spread out from a high perch. But those guys are all posers compared to this fella. This guy is such a jerk that all the other parasites look at him and say, dude, that is so not cool. Sacalina is a barnacle that attaches itself to a crab. If it's a female crab, it sterilizes the female and forms an egg sac where the crab's egg sac would normally be. After the barnacle eggs are fertilized and hatch, the crab then cares for the eggs as if they're her own. But if the crab is male, Sacalina initiates a hormone procedure which alters the physiology of the crab, turning it into a pseudo-female, even forcing it to do mating dances that attract other male crabs and tell them to come on over and come get some. So those are some real-world parasites that seem like they were plucked right out of Wrath of Khan or Robert Heinlein's Puppet Masters. Those guys are bad news, no doubt about it. But sometimes the line between parasite and symbiote can be a little more blurry. We see it in science fiction with Spider-Man. The Venom symbiote threatened to destroy Peter Parker, but ended up being an ally and savior to Flash Thompson. In the real world, it can also be hard to tell which organisms are the good guys and which are the bad guys. We are literally covered in foreign organisms. We have 10 times more bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms than we do human cells. Your cells are a minority in your own body. Biologists are working to identify all the different species that make up the ecosystem, which is our body, but it's a huge undertaking. They've counted more than a thousand just in our gut. The even harder job is figuring out what these species do. One of these species is H. pylori. 50 years ago, 80% of Americans had H. pylori in their belly. Then it was determined that pylori was a bad guy because it sometimes caused peptic ulcers. So when Americans' overusage of antibiotics started wiping out H. pylori, everyone said good riddance. Today, only 6% of children have H. pylori in their stomachs. Unfortunately, scientists later discovered that this bacteria produces a hormone that tells us when to stop eating. At a time when America is facing a childhood obesity epidemic, children are lacking an essential hormone that allows them to control their weight. We're dependent upon many of these organisms to break down food and bolster our immune system. Instead of blindly wiping these organisms out, we need to identify the threatening ones and figure out how we can better exploit the beneficial ones, like the spotted salamander does. The spotted salamander has developed a symbiotic relationship with a single-celled algae. The salamander's embryos produce waste, which feed the algae, and in return, the embryos incorporate the chlorophyll-filled algae into their own cells, turning the adult spotted salamander into the world's only known photosynthetic invertebrate. If we can understand just how this is possible and replicate it, then through symbiosis, we may be able to turn ourselves into a living solar battery, just like a certain red-caped Kryptonian. I was inspired to do this episode after watching the anime series Parasite the Maxim. Plus, Hellgod67 kept asking me for a Venom episode, and you don't want to get on the bad side of a guy who wants everyone to refer to him as Hellgod. You can watch Parasite the Maxim on Crunchyroll.com, as well as a slew of other great anime series that I'm just diving into, like Gintama and Case Closed. Crunchyroll is the sponsor of this episode, and it's such a huge help to have a like-minded sponsor want to back my series. You can go to crunchyroll.com slash science friction right now and sign up for Crunchyroll Premium to get a whole month of free anime. You can watch it anytime on all your devices in full 1080 HD quality. So if you like this series and want to lend some support, go to crunchyroll.com slash science friction and sign up for a free month of some of the most recent and some of the most classic anime titles. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes, check out some of the previous ones, and be sure to tell me what superpower you want. <laughs> you gotta be like, oh no, my daddy tossed me to the couch. Okay. Why don't you look a little scared? Look, look scared, okay? Okay. Uh, oh. Let's do that again. Oh no, my daddy threw me to the couch. <laughs> 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 <laughs>